By Friday, we've already had a really long, treacherous week trying to get this engine put together for the Malibu. Things went pretty well up at the dyno. That went good. We got the engine back home and we managed to get the engine set down in the car. But now it's crunch time. It's time to start fitting the headers up in the chassis. Now the old headers were only inch and 5 eighths primary tube and they were a pain in the butt. So I can only imagine how bad these inch and 7 eighths headers are gonna be. At least that's what I thought. It turns out they actually fit better than the inch and 5 eighths headers. However, we still need to adapt these new headers to the old exhaust. So I ran down to Mark's to get some mandrel bends just in case we needed them. And then I got a call from the shop saying we need a starter. Well, these new headers are designed to fit around a Powermaster excess starter. Luckily, Jegs had one in stock at 11th Avenue. So that was a major relief to me. And while I was in Jegs, I went ahead and picked up a lightweight fuel pump push rod since the Malibu still uses the block mounted mechanical pump. Jegs offers one with a bronze tip on it, specifically for roller cams. So that allowed us to get the fuel pump mounted and then we turned our attention to installing the new starter. And the starter bolted up fine, that wasn't a problem. However, the battery cable was way too short. So once again, I'm back down at Mark's digging in his parts bins. He got me hooked up with two new cables, Beautiful. along with a pair of brand new side post battery adapters so that I can hook up all my extra wiring to the battery. When I got back to the shop from my second trip down to see Mark, the guys had already dug the exhaust system out and they had begun mocking up the exhaust system to the new headers. Luckily, the bins that were on the old exhaust system fit to the new headers. All we really needed to do was change flanges. So Jeremy tackled the driver's side first, got it tacked up, and then set it on the ground and finished welding it all the way around. Once we had the driver's side done, the passenger side went a little bit easier. Now that we've got the new headers fitted, a new starter, new battery cables, and the exhaust systems finished up, it's time to set the car back down and start working on all the gravy work up top. Kenny went ahead and installed the nitrous plate, the mounting bracket, the burst panel, and last but not least, the brand new ATM 750 carburetor. Jeremy started working on putting the accessory drive bracket back on the passenger side and mounting the AC compressor and rerouting all the wiring. By this time, we were all pretty tired and we were just about ready to turn in for the night. And I'm missing a few pieces and parts, some hose clamps and the little clip that holds the throttle cable on the carburetor. So first thing Saturday morning, I call up Mark down at A1. Now I can tell by the tone of his voice, he's having a rough week. And if I know my brother, he's most likely a big part of the problem. So I head down to see Mark and see how he's doing. Marcus, yes. you've had a rough week. It's been rough. It's been a lot of stuff going on. Can we talk about it or no? Well, I mean, we can a little bit. I mean, it's, you know, I don't care. We, I mean, Uncle Bucko's one rough. thing. Yeah, one thing, yeah. Uncle Bucko's was, yeah, cherry on top. One of the guys wrecked one of Mark's delivery vans this week, and Mark's about stressed completely out. So I figure I'd take some workload off Mark and depend on thing one to get me my electrical connectors and my heat shrink tubing that I need. And it looks like Tyler's doing a bang up job. What did I ask you for? For like 16 to like 22 gauge wire. Yeah, and what have you got? Like three aught to one aught. Why are you standing there with that in your hand in front of me when I ask you for something other than that? Because I was trying to show you this shrink wrap, see if you are interested in it. No. Okay. Go get me the stuff I asked you for. So while Tyler's working on that, I turned to Thing 2 and asked him to get me some vacuum line. But Mark ended up having to go back and hold their hands regardless. So in the end, I guess I didn't take any workload off Mark. I just increased his frustration level. And that's something I can relate to all too well. Case in point, my helpers were supposed to be here early this morning, but they didn't show up until after lunchtime. Kenny says Jeremy was supposed to text him when he got here, but he never heard from him. Well, what's your excuse for being so late today, Jeremy? Our father called. So this morning, one of our relatives showed up at the farm with a broke down vehicle, supposedly a dead battery. Said vehicle ended up broke down behind mom and dad's pickup truck on top of the hill and somehow led to this catastrophe. Well, you can't fix stupid, but sometimes you can fix so evidently that's why Jeremy was late getting to work this morning. But now that we're all here at the shop and we've got all the parts we need, 
it's time to really start knocking some things out on this Malibu. We had to put the battery on the charger to get it charged up. I got my throttle linkage hooked up, the carburetor's plumbed, and it's time to start filling the cooling system. And here comes our first major setback for the day. One of the water pump gaskets had gotten damaged and it's leaking profusely. Then we found some problems with the wiring we had to address, but after we got that stuff taken care of, it was time to put the serpentine belt on and get ready to fire this thing up for the first time down in the car. Now, even though the timing was set on the engine dyno, every ignition box is a little bit different with ignition timing. So anytime you change ignition boxes, the first thing you need to do is check the timing. With Bob's ignition box on the dyno, it was set at 36, but on my ignition box, it showed 38 degrees. So I turned the timing back a few degrees and then put the car up on the lift to check for leaks. One of the plugs in the side of the block just above the oil filter housing was loose. So Kenny reached in through the inner fender well with an Allen wrench and tightened it up. Other than that, the engine is bone dry and not a leak in sight. The oil pressure looks good, the exhaust system is nice and quiet, and the throttle response is incredible. So Kenny goes ahead and tops off the fuel tank with a fresh batch of E85 and we back the car outside to let it warm up and idle for a few minutes. And then it's finally time to bring it back in and try and mount the hood. And we're all just praying that the hood clears the carburetor. I've already removed the two inch spacer. And if I had to, I would swap to a shorter intake, but luckily the bowl vents actually cleared the hood, just barely. I'm really glad that we listened to Nolan about this camshaft. Now I've had quite a few hydraulic roller camshafts in small block Chevys, but I've really never had one that sounded this good and drove this nice. And it obviously makes good power. I'm just not sure if I'm gonna be able to wait for the track to open next spring to find out. Now my main concern is getting this car to PRI this week. After that, it's Christmas. But once we get through Christmas, I'm going to be looking for some place to take this thing down south. I mean, after all, we built that new 400 small block for Vicky's 64 C10. There's no reason we can't load it on an open trailer, put it behind the 64, and head down to Florida. But for tonight, we've got to settle for Buckeye Lake, right here in Ohio. Now, you really can't tell it in this video how cold it is, but I'm telling you, it's pretty frigid. If the Malibu didn't have a heater in it, we definitely wouldn't be out running around in it tonight. But that's the nice thing about having a legit street car with heat, air conditioning, power steering, and power brakes. For an old school carbureted small block Chevy, mine just so happens to make a lot of power. Thanks in part to Uncle Bob. If it weren't for him, I wouldn't have had this opportunity to build this really nice street motor with this Iski hydraulic roller camshaft. And I'll have some more news on that later in the video, because according to Nolan at Iski, there's been a considerable amount of interest in this roller camshaft that I've put in this 421, and he's asked both Bob and I to join him at the Iski booth Saturday at PRI for a pretty major announcement. So if you're an old school small block Chevy streetcar guy, this may interest you. Now, obviously the last week or so has been devoted entirely to getting this Malibu ready for PRI. But Sunday was to be a Vicky day. And the first thing on her agenda was replacing this fake Christmas tree with a real one. I, on the other hand, was focused on the fact that the furnace has quit out in the shop. And when this light flashes, it usually means we're out of fuel oil. And although I really need to get that taken care of as soon as possible, I promised Vicky I would take her to get a Christmas tree in her 64 Chevy pickup today. Now, I think I remember her saying she had some plans for taking photographs with the truck and a Christmas tree or something, I don't know. I think she's got some plans to make Christmas cards, 
so she's on a mission to find just the right tree, and not just any tree is gonna do. She's tromping through mud and standing water back and forth until she finally lays eyes on the tree she wants. So it's time for me to go to work with this damn saw so I can get this tree loaded up and get back to working on my furnace. By the time we got back to the house with this Christmas tree, Uncle Bucko was already on his way with five gallons of diesel fuel to put in the fuel oil tank. And Vicky wasted no time in parking this truck out in the backyard and hauling damn near everything she had in the house for Christmas decorations out to the bed of this truck. She's clearly got a vision, but of what I don't know. Look at those pictures I showed you, and they got them staged with all the pretty stuff. That's what I'm trying to recreate. Now generally when she starts decorating like this, it turns into a project for me to clean up. Kind of like the rotten gourds and pumpkins every fall at Thanksgiving. But she's going all out this time for this Christmas photo shoot. Even that stupid Chinese snowman got drafted for a spot in the back of that truck. At this point, I'm just going around documenting everything that she's hauled out there and where it came from. Because I'm certain I'm going to be the one to have to put it back. About this time, Jeremy showed up with my fuel oil and she took off with an old sled he had in the bed of his truck. So evidently he's in on this deal too. But we did manage to get my heat back on the shop so I could work on my Malibu tonight and hopefully clean up some of this clutter on my workbench. Look, I have ideas about angles and how to pose people. Look at that, we can get some side shots. I've got this under control. Honey, you can't You're even dying. see the truck. No, look, you clearly can. Look, see how you'll be able to see the cab, the cute window in the back with the wreath. Look, I've been studying. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Have no fear. Christmas cards are here. So there you have it. There's definitely more to this deal than I initially thought. This is an all-out premeditated photo shoot for the holidays. And old Kenny even got roped into it. I guess Harley was in on this deal too. After we got done taking pictures out back, it was time to go to dinner. And since Vicky's truck is still parked in the backyard full of Christmas crap, we decided it would be best to just take the Malibu to dinner. So I backed it out of the shop and let it warm up for a few minutes, and then we hit the road. And if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you probably already know where we're headed. Me, Vicky, Kenny, and Harley, and their two kids all headed to Pickerington to Cracker Barrel. Now, usually by the time we get there, they're out of Vicky's favorite dinner on Sunday, Sunday special pot roast. So I remind her when she goes in the store, we don't have a lot of time to shop if you want to try and get pot roast before they run out, which that worked to get us in and get us seated fairly quick. But as usual, once we got done eating, it becomes a free-for-all out in the gift shop. I always use the excuse I need to go out and warm the car up, so I just go out and sit in the Malibu until she comes out. And just as I expected, she didn't leave the gift shop empty-handed. Now, Monday morning, Vicky had errands to run. So she got up, but instead of going out and cleaning up the backyard and all the crap she drug out there to that truck, she takes off on the Suburban and leaves that for me and Kenny Powers to deal with. Now there's no way I'm making a hundred trips back and forth to carry that stuff back to the house. So I just back the 64 up to the back porch and Kenny and I unload it for Vicky to deal with when she gets home. However, this damn Christmas tree has got to be set up in the shop. And poor old Jeremy showed up right on time, just in time to help us get this damn thing set in a tree stand. This damn tree hasn't been in the garage five minutes and we've already got a shovel full of pine needles to clean up. Come to find out, it was Kenny Powers' idea to go get a real tree. So I appoint Kenny Powers, chief decorator 
and maintenance engineer of the shop Christmas tree. So anyway, while Kenny's working on that, mom and dad stopped by to grab their truck and take it to the BMV to get tags and title. And I told Jeremy, we need to get back on this 55 Chevy project and we need to start clearing out some of these extra parts to open up some space in the shop. And one thing we need to get rid of is this 327 that Jeremy wants to put in his 36 Chevy coupe. So I back the Malibu out of the garage and Jeremy backs his pickup truck in so that we can load up the short block, the cylinder heads, and a whole bunch of stock parts that we've removed off the 55 Chevy that we want to put in storage. So once we got this stuff loaded up, Jeremy heads out for his house. Now Jeremy only lives about three minutes away from me in a little town called Kirkersville, and he's close enough I can literally fly the drone over to his house to keep an eye on him. Now, since the weather's pretty decent today and it's not real windy, I thought today would be a perfect opportunity to test the range on my drone. And it had no problem making the trip and zeroing in on Jeremy's garage. Get that old junk out of the garage, I'll show him. Welcome to your new home. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a time where you're gonna put an ass whooping on some people. While Jeremy's busy unloading his truck down at his garage, Vicky returns home from running errands. Oh! That's awesome. And you also notice your truck is no longer in the backyard. Yes, thank you. And all the crap that you stuffed in the bed is on the back porch for you to That's put back wherever you want. I half of it away last night. But half of it? There ain't no way. Well, any of the stuff that I didn't want to that was important, like I put that inside, but then there was still some. This looks great. Still some? Yeah. Just a little. And I have some, these to add. What are those? Regular ornaments. I didn't know we had little nitrous bottles. Look. They're keychains. I know, I thought I thought they were all gone. Oh no. There's a stash, oh there's a stash. There's a stash. Well, they make excellent ornaments. <laughs> what is this? Our sign maker, Dan Crippen, out in Missouri, South Central Flag Company. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, he does incredible work. He's the one that makes these signs, and so you asked him if he could help you out for a PRI display. That is correct. And we are about to unveil the PRI display. Now, I've got to admit, I was pretty blown away when Nitrous Express invited me to bring that Malibu out to PRI and display it in their booth. So I decided that would be a good time for me to put up a display stand with some information and background on the car and list out all the sponsors that helped me with projects here at Old Man's Garage. And Dan absolutely knocked it out of the park. He didn't just make that display stand. He also built me this really nice shadow box to protect and display all the original paperwork that came with the car. So once we got all that stuff put in the shadow box, it was time to load up. Great, help me load this thing up? I guess. We'll go for a little ride? I guess. Now, although the tracks are closed in Ohio right now, I can't really show anybody what this car is really capable of on the track. But I can take it around the block with Uncle Buckwheat and maybe get on it a little bit and show you guys this car is no dud on motor. And Jeremy isn't exactly the biggest fan of the idea of riding with me in this car, or any car for that matter. You can tell by the look on his face, he knows what's about to happen. Unfortunately, there was nowhere to hide a camera in the car without him noticing. Now, obviously I'm gonna have some work to do on this car in order to be able to put down the power it makes just on motor, much less on nitrous on a bare road. Currently, the car just has a 750 carburetor on it that was built for my 355. And I've done zero tuning on the engine so far other than what we did on the dyno. But once we get done with PRI and Christmas, I'll be looking to go south to do some testing. All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we got the Malibu loaded up just in time to beat the rain. It's kind of drizzling out there right now, and I know they've been calling for rain. That's why I wanted to get that trailer here tonight, get the car loaded up, because I have to leave first thing in the morning to head to Indianapolis. Uh, now, if you're wondering, PRI is Performance Racing Industry Trade Show. 
and it's not open to the general public. Uh, you have to have credentials to uh, someone in the industry like Nitrous Express uh, to get into the show. It's not open to the general public. So if you've been thinking about maybe going to PRI just to come see us, know right up front that you're not going to be able to get in unless you already have your credentials and it's probably too late to even try to get them from anybody anyway. Uh, I know they've been trying to crack down on this deal uh, with just letting the general public in for the last few years, and it looks like this year they're really doing it. So uh, you're not going to be able to get in if you don't already have credentials to get in through someone in the industry. It's someone like Nitrous Express or ATM or, and I'm not telling you this for you to go pestering these people for credentials to get in, but I'm just telling you, I don't want anybody to make the trip down there and be disappointed when they can't get in as general public. Now I can tell you that I will most likely uh, be live Saturday between 11 and noon at Iski Racing's booth at PRI. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, Nolan Jamora with Iski has invited Bob and I, Uncle Bob and I, to come visit uh, from 11 to noon. And I believe that they will be uh, putting that out live on Iski Racing's YouTube channel. So if you want to go do a little search for Iski Racing on YouTube, like and subscribe to their channel. And they will be going live throughout the PRI week. <laughs> throughout the entire show. They're going to be going live with a lot of people that you've probably seen on television, uh, both in No Prep Kings and on Street Outlaws. Uh, and I will probably be live Saturday between 11 and noon. There will be multiple people going live from, his, or, uh, sorry, from PRI. Uh, I will try and share those with you as I learn who will be going live at PRI. Uh, I may even go live at PRI from time to time. We'll just see how things go. I know usually service there is sketchy at best with that many people all in one place in a building. So I can't make any promises, but look for that on Iski Racing's YouTube channel. I like surprises. You like surprises? I'm gonna be there Saturday because I'm oh, gonna that's get right. with surprises. So Miss Vicky's gonna be there with me. What days are you gonna be there? I'm gonna be there Thursday afternoon, Friday and Saturday. Good. <laughs> You'll keep me out of trouble, won't you? Yes. <laughs> I am the filter. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You need a filter, and I'm just the person. <laughs> oh, God. How are you going to filter it? But you can't catch it before it comes out of my mouth. No, but I can stand there and pinch you. Yeah, you're good at that. Your hand Under the, the table eyebrow. at dinner, you're always <laughs> pinching or needling me, telling me to shut up. Yep. The silent thing that she does that nobody sees <laughs> behind the scenes. So, right. you were talking earlier about the PRI and who can go, and, and if anybody's, um, you know, curious about if you can go or not, PRI, they've got a website. Uh, basically, it says that you have to be a member of PRI. I don't know if there's time still. If somebody wants to buy a membership, maybe you could still go. Look into it, PRI website. So. But don't show up thinking yeah. you're just going to walk in but as general public just, and buy tickets. That's not going to happen. Not even head. if you're scrappy do, you can't even get in, huh, baby? <laughs> Hi, Papa. Um, that's probably going to be the worst part of the trip is that the puppies will not be I going. I know. <laughs> I know. Somebody made a nasty comment on my Instagram the other day what? that, oh, yeah, because my Malibu is supposedly a street car, but I trailer it two miles to trails from our house. So let me just go into detail what about here the for 9, a minute. 9,000 other times you've driven it every the the trailer isn't for my car. The trailer is, is for, for scrap the and, and for June our, pup. Where's listen, June pup? And Miss Vicky doesn't like porta johns, so yeah. So we've got our own bathroom, and we've got some place for the dogs and, and air conditioning and food, all that. All that. That's the what golf it's cart, for. the camera equipment, like that's what the trailer's for. Yeah, the kids need to charge their cameras and stuff. So yeah, like it's our headquarters. Isn't that right, June? So that's going to about do it for tonight, guys. I apologize. It's been a few days since I got a video up. I've just been extremely busy trying to get everything done around here that I need to get done and decorating for Christmas. 
I will be putting up videos this week. I don't know how good the quality is going to be. I'm probably not going to be able to edit them like I normally would. Uh, we'll just see how things go. Uh, Jeremy and Kenny are still going to be here in the shop working. I've got plenty of stuff for them to do while I'm gone at PRI. They'll video for me. Like I said, the video quality may not be as good <laughs> while I'm gone. But they're going to be here working on some projects. Uh, maintenance on the 64. It's time for an oil change on it already. We're working on the 55 Chevy. Working on mom and dad's C10 pickup. Uh, notice today the oil pressure gauge doesn't work in it. And the water temperature gauge may not be working. I'm not sure. We need to look into some of that stuff. So that stuff will keep on coming. Regardless whether I'm here or not. I just don't know how well I'll be able to edit it from PRI. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being patient for another video. We appreciate all of you very much. We'll see you all when I get back here next week, but I will definitely be uploading from Indianapolis while I'm at PRI. Good night, everybody.